Okay, so now we move on to exploring Bitcoin. Um, Mempool.space, which you can see here, is a great uh, graphical interface of what is going on with your node um, and the status of transactions as well as um, you know the status of the whole Bitcoin network. So this is a really good place where you can um, search up transaction IDs, um, uh, explore the blockchain and understand the status of the network, how busy it is, and also um, check the fees um, situation as to you know how much fee you want to pay when you are uh, you know doing a Bitcoin transaction. So what we can do is instead of going to mempool.space, we can host our own little private mempool.space um, so that we're not giving away information to the official server of mempool.space. We're only we're using our own server to deliver us this information. And so this is the GitHub repository um, that we will be using to, to do this. And we're gonna be using the Docker implementation. So let's install Docker onto our PC. So Docker install Ubuntu. And we'll go to the installation docs here. So let's uh, copy um, this and install Docker. Um, so start with this one. And we will copy these to make sure these packages are installed. Great. And we will um, add the GBG key. Copy. And we will copy this in. And we'll go sudo apt update and we can install these here and yes We'll go to the post installation steps for Linux as well. And we will add um, our user to the Docker group. So copy and paste that in like so. That What that does is basically it allows you to um, use Docker without sudo. So when I hit sudo, uh, sorry, Docker PS, it's, I'm getting permission denied. Um, but when I exit out of the, um, of the node box and I come back in again, now I type the same command docker ps, I'm now able to access things. And that is what this command does. So we don't have to use sudo um, when we are uh, installing containers and those sorts of things. Just as a background, Docker is a containerization software. Um, it, it siphons off a little area of your computer um, and runs um, you know, applications. We'll be doing this um, for mempool um, and we will also be using other applications as well um, when we come to that later in the series uh, for docker so docker is a you know it, it is a yeah a piece of software that allows you to run multiple um, applications within a, uh, a containerized environment so now that we've installed docker um, we're also going to install docker compose so let's um, see if we can download that Okay, so we'll go to the Linux standalone binary. Um, let's copy this in, copy. Um, and we will put a sudo in front of it because it requires us to do so. And we will change permissions to make it executable. And we should see um, Docker Compose version, and hopefully it will spit out the version there. Fantastic. So we've got that installed as well. Okay, so now we'll go over to the mempool.space um, repository. And what we'll do here is um, grab this code. So we will copy this, and we will go git clone in our home directory. 
just make sure you're in your home directory here. Um, git clone and that repository there. List that out. So now we have a mempool um, folder. So let's cd into mempool and we will go into the docker folder. And here is the docker compose file. So let's edit this to match what we need. So let's go uh, nano docker compose dot yml. Um, what we'll do here is instead change this to 4080. You can leave it at 80, um, but yeah, I, I just prefer to have it at 4080. Now, your Bitcoin RPC host, um, this one is going to be your IP address of your Bitcoin node. So that for me is 192.168.55.30. Uh, that's the internal IP address of my um, core. And as um, my username is Bitcoin and my password is also Bitcoin. Okay. So we'll just go through all of this. Everything else you can sort of leave the same here. Now with these restarts um, up the top as well, we'll change that to always instead of on failure. So we'll just do always. And this one here, we'll change that to always. Uh, what that means is that this will start up on the boot of your machine as well. So just, yeah. Um, and we'll change this one to um, always as well. Okay. Now there are some things that we need to edit um, in, in here. Uh, to make sure that this is actually um, linking back to our Electrum server. Uh, so we'll go to the home page um, and we will add a couple of things here as um, required. So what we need to do is change the mempool backend, um, like it says here, from none to Electrum. So let's do that. Okay. Um, and then under the API service, set these fields as well. So what we'll do is we will um, copy these sections and we will put them just, maybe we put them at the top here. So we'll copy those out. And the Electrum host is again 192.168.55.30, 5002 and Electrum TLS we will enable. Um, so let's remove that and put that as true. Okay. Now the final thing that I will do is add this um, to the uh, the end of the um, the Docker Compose YML file. Um, what this will do is just create a new sub network for it. Um, the reason that I'm doing this is because when I um, want to install, for example, the Samurai Wallet Dojo, that's also going to be on Docker and I don't want any interference between mempool.space as well as IP addresses that um, the Dojo will assign to us. So I just want to leave, um, I, I've just you know created a little um, a different subnet for mempool.space to rest in. So that's that's what I've changed there. Everything else looks to be okay now. Um, so just make sure that you've, uh, you know, filled out this form as accurately as possible. So, you know, we're changing um, from restart on failure to always. Um, the uh, 4080 uh, port I have changed, but it's up to you which port you want to, to use. Uh, the Electrum host, um, you're filling out your core uh, RPC core or Bitcoin core details, and um, you are also going to add in um, the the new network there, the subnet there that I've I've just um, uh, I've just showed you there. So Control X Y and uh, Enter. Um, that will save it. Now from here, what we'll do, as the instructions suggest, um, is basically Docker compose up. So Docker compose up. Let's see what happens. Okay, so this looks promising. Um, now, if we go down to the bottom here um, into uh, another um, uh, terminal and I type in Docker PS, oh, let's exit out and come back in. And let's hit uh, Docker PS. 
uh, you can see that there is um, multiple um, uh, Docker containers being run. And we, what we can do is go to our um, browser and type in the IP address 192.168.55.30 colon 4080, which is what I nominated. And let's see what happens. And now we have our very own mempool.space. So this one will take a little bit of time to, um, I guess, uh, you know, develop um, to look uh, similar to what's going on here. Um, but, you know, you will over time get these graphs and those sorts of things. At the moment, they're quite blank. But over time, once this thing sort of uh, builds out and, and stays on for a, a longer time, you'll be able to see that these graphs do come through as well. Now, the other thing that you can also explore is the blocks. So, uh, for example, if I wanted to go into here, I can see what's going on with these blocks and some of the transactions. The other cool thing um, is if I wanted to um, search up a transaction ID, I can, you know, search it up here. Uh, the other thing is I can sort of click on one and have a look at the inputs and outputs um, and, and those sorts of things as well. Um, the other thing that I can do um, is explore a particular address. So if I want to see this 3.82 BTC in that address there, you can see that that is now um, you know, showing you the amount um, and the full um, sort of, uh, you know, details around this this whole address. So you can now explore um, the entire Bitcoin network um, using uh, your, your own Bitcoin node rather than going out there um, to somebody else's Bitcoin node. This is really, really handy. Now, another thing that I want to make mention um, is this also teaches you how to uh, set an appropriate fee. Now, my uh, default stance is that I set my fees when I want to make a Bitcoin transaction as one sat per byte. Now, that um, it, it really depends on how busy the network is alongside how quickly you want your Bitcoin uh, transaction to confirm. Now, here is the, uh, I guess, the blocks that have been confirmed already. And this side of the screen in green is where, um, this is where the mempool sits. Um, so this is the market for all uh, unconfirmed transactions as of now, right? And so what is happening is that the people who are paying higher fee end up in this bucket and that will that will go over every 10 well roughly every 10 minutes um, you will see that one block gets confirmed now um, if you are paying a higher fee you end up in here and then the other straggler, straddlers they will end up in here and it will go down as um, you know as you know depending upon how busy the network is so at the moment if you look at this this block has 2800 transactions the highest uh, fee that is being paid is 544 sats per byte, with the minimum in this block being five sats per byte. And the average of these 2,800 transactions is eight sats per byte. If I wanted to get into the next block, I would probably just go, okay, here's the average of eight. I might pay nine, and then I'm, I'm confident that I will be um, confirmed in the, in the next block. If... I need something less priority, uh, then I'd probably just put it as one sat per byte. But you can sort of now judge how long things will take. Um, understanding that, you know, um, one block will take roughly 10 minutes. So that's kind of just how mempool.space operates. There's plenty of things here um, for you to, you know, dig into and, and, and observe. Um, so, yeah. This is mempool.space. Um, now, if you don't want these logs, you can just go control C. Um, that will stop all the containers, I think, um, which I didn't really want to do, but I'll show you how to get them back up. Let's have a look here. Yeah, so they're all dying off now. Uh, and you'll see here it's offline. So what we're gonna do is instead of docker compose up, I'm gonna do docker compose up dash D. Um, so let's, uh, once this container stops, then I'll be able to do that. Okay, so that's uh, stopped now. So what I'll do is I'll just um, go to docker compose up d, dash d, like that. So that will now um, just run away in the background. If I refresh this, this will come back online. Okay. Um, give it a, a few moments and it'll start to yeah, populate everything up again. You can see that the 
you know, <laughs> the graphs are coming along. Um, ultimately, it will mirror this at some point, um, but just give it some time and it will chug along nicely. Okay. So that's mempool.space. Um, yeah. Enjoy. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to support the work that I'm doing, head on over to ministryofnodes.com and click on the support button. I accept Bitcoin, Lightning, PayPal, and credit card. If you want one on one consulting, head on over to the consulting page and book in into my calendar widget. I can help you with holding your own keys, running your own node, and privacy best practices. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.